Good evening, uh, all our YouTubers out there uh, checking out the uh, channel here. Um, uh, this is going to be a video on astrology. I'm Keno Thomas, and uh, I'm going to cover uh, some topics that you should be kind of familiar with before digging into your natal chart. Um, so, welcome to Astrology with Keno Thomas. Um, the Sun. The sun is a major, major, major part of astrology, um, and we'll get into reasons why, um, but first off, before there was electricity, it was the sun that gave humans light, okay, before we had night lights and street lights and uh, lights and lighting in our homes and stuff like that, um, it, was just the sun, it was just the sun that gave us light, warmth, and security from predator fit predator filled nights okay uh, there's the reason why we have shelters so the animals don't come and you know I guess the predatorial animals that would possibly feed on us um, uh, are kept outside and we stay inside uh, be it housing be it tents um, and things of that nature so uh, uh, the Sun played a very important part in our survival and how we ate and uh, security. Well, I guess that would have fallen under survival. But uh, um, here's probably if you did not have shelter uh, and you were m messing around, running around at night, you probably run into one of these guys. Here's the lioness. She's hunting. Um, this video, this picture was captured with night vision equipment. And here is a jaguar just kind of laying in wait for something to come on by and be dinner. Okay, so. Uh, during the daytime, they pretty much just kind of hang out and they wait for a nightfall to come and start hunting again. Sometimes I guess they catch stuff during the day, but uh, you know, it's they see at night and it's harder for us if you're not a night vision creature, uh, or meaning that you're not someone or something that can see at night. You would probably fall victim to one of these guys. Um, so humans knew that um, we had to rely on the sun for our crops to grow and if we can't eat then we would not survive as a species so here we just see some ancient um, writings we can see the guy planting seeds and we could see uh, some guys here tilling the soil and um, here um, we could see a man using beasts to uh, till the soil and plant seeds and you know I guess towards the end of the summer you or throughout the summer and up to the end of the summer you could reap crops and uh, grow food and harvest the food for the winter time so Sun was very important and uh, it's probably why it was probably is still one of the most adored objects in history here we can see hieroglyphics uh, uh, the goddess is receiving energy from the sun. Uh, here we have artwork where the sun is depicted, and I'm assuming that's gold in here. Uh, this looks like a South American type of uh, depiction of the sun. Um, so, ancients paid attention to, and not only the sun, but they paid attention to the stars which we call constellations and um, what keeping track of these stars or constellations helped us anticipate events going on so here's another guy he's studying stars seeing what's going on and um, there's another group of people here uh, just stargazing and keeping track of what's going on and here is a depiction with Arabs and you can tell the Arabs by the attire that they're wearing in their headgear and this is a topic that uh, or I guess uh, something that humans have done from the old days they use something or did something called anthropomorphism anthropomorphism and it's the assignment of human traits to non-human objects here we see the clouds and we can see the head on the clouds and we can see the sun and there's a face on the sun so we're assigning those 
or these objects human characteristics uh, I remember when I was a kid I would see like say like a cloud and um, I guess it was to show where wind was coming from and you see a face in the cloud actually blowing wind and that was supposed to be um, a theory or idea of how wind was created there was actually a man in the cloud blowing and that's how wind occurred uh, until science taught us, taught us otherwise and here we have a face on the sun so uh, for a long time humans have always assigned um, human characteristics to non-human objects uh, so um, we're, we were aware of the stars we kept track of them and uh, it just helped us uh, prepare for certain events springtime for instance uh, this is the time when uh, I could go back to my other depiction of the guys that were planting and tilling the soil and stuff like that but they were planting seeds in the springtime um, then we kept track of stars and we noticed that wow the temperatures kind of got warmer or even hot super hot in some areas and um, this will probably be the time when you want to go on vacation um, travel uh, you wouldn't have to worry about snow and things of that nature during this time of the year and then fall would come along and we basically reap our harvest or reap our last harvest for the winter and stock up food for the winter uh, because when the winter time came we would not be able to travel as well as we could during the spring and summertime um, in addition to that we could also keep track of solar and lunar eclipses and phases of the moon so uh, very very important a lot of people think oh we just look at a calendar well now we can just look at a calendar and we can see what time of the year we know when the hot months are we know when the colder months are um, and we know when the not so whole cold or not so hot months are and it's just we do this just by looking at a calendar because the ancients established a system of time being years months days um, that helped us manage you know our resources when to harvest our food when to save up for food and actually when to get in the shelter and clothing to wear and when the time comes you got to get your cold weather jackets and your boots out so um, they did this by looking at the stars and the Sun and keeping track of them and um, grouping these stars in what we call constellations in this slide there's a really interesting uh, constellation that I'm very familiar with and it is the constellation Orion and uh, Orion is most noted by the belt we call this Orion's belt and there's three stars that you can see very clearly when identifying the constellation Orion and this is the belt of Orion so this star pattern was actually uh, I guess anthropomorphized into a god named Orion and this god is supposed to be actually a man here we have Taurus the constellation Taurus and this is representative by a head of a bull and then horns so um, that in a nutshell is kind of like we'd see stars and we just come up with ideas oh this is a man he's a god and this is an animal so anthropomorphization um, we can assign not only male characteristics but I guess uh, we could also use use this uh, Orion the god Orion um, to you know just be transformed into a man or a god that cares about what we do and he's always watching us um, even during the daytime because it's not just uh, daytime well it's daytime here and right now where I am but it's night somewhere else and Orion's watching them now so um, just to move along here so this brings us to the zodiac cross and this is one of the oldest timekeeping tools in history the reason why I say that is because we can use this to break down 
365 days into four seasons, 12 months, um, and uh, just to jump in, 12 months of the year, four seasons, and we can also note and know when the solstices and equinoxes are coming, and I will cover that in another video about the solstices and equinoxes, or equinoxes. Um, the word zodiac is an ancient term in Greek the term meant circle of animals in other languages it can be called the animal circle um, it's not just animals though in these depictions uh, we uh, we do have animals we have fish we have a bull we have a crab um, we have scales that's not even a male or animal but um, the human or anthropomorphic side of this is the half man half horse or goat, goat, which is Sagittarius, the water bearer, which is a male, the twins, which are two uh, twins. Now sometimes, most of the times I've seen them depicted as males, but sometimes I've seen Gemini depicted as females, two twin females. And then we have Virgo to Virgin at the bottom. Um, and that represents kind of like the fall time when the harvest needs to be reaped and uh, food needs to be stocked for the winter time. Uh, here, back to the anthropomorphism. Again, we have the constellation here to the right, which is Gemini, and then we have the twins on the left. So we've given this star pattern human characteristics. Here, Aquarius uh, looks like a picture, and this could be depicted or thought of as a picture being tilted and water being poured out. Here we have anthropomorphized this into a god tipping the picture and here you can see like the little houses or huts and the little people down here. Uh, so uh, humans have been anthropomorphizing things for a very, very long time. Um, but coming back to our zodiac circle, the sun was uh, per personified in the middle of the zodiac circle or circle of animals animal circle, whatever you want to call it, as the unseen creator or God. So I put the sun in the middle. And I kind of like this because I think of this as, a lot of times I think of this is Jesus, which is the son of God, God's son, God's son. I think of Jesus as the son of God. And the Bible represents, the, to the, represents Jesus as, which basically was the son, the light of the world. So the, the savior of humankind keeps us away from the predators as I previously uh, demonstrated and um, so the zodiac circle then becomes a place for God's son to travel okay so the sun travels around the circle throughout the year as we see it from the earth the sun is traveling but we are actually rotating around the sun and I will jump into a example here. We have January, we have May, we have September. Now, just looking at this, uh, let's take January for instance. January puts us in the constellation Sagittarius. So the Earth is here, the Sun is here, and so in the background we see Sagittarius. Typically, we this is most notable when the sun is rising. We say that the sun is rising in Sagittarius and I'm going to give you some other examples to kind of better explain this. Say for instance we have Aries and let's just say for our purposes the earth is here, the sun is here, and Aries is in the background. So if we look at this picture here from a camera person's point of view we're standing outside, the sun is about to rise. This is what we mean. Now, we know that the sun is just going to go straight up, but in the constellation Aries, this is, uh, we say that the sun is rising in Aries. So, this would be um, the angle that we would be looking at. Here, um, Taurus is the constellation in this case. So, Taurus, the sun. So, the earth would probably be somewhere around here. When the sun rises, we'd be looking at the sun here, and Taurus will be in the background like that. So, 
just think of the cameraman as being us. The sun is about to rise, and Taurus is directly in the background when the sun rises. So, um, here we have Gemini. We see the sun about to rise. Gemini is right here. So the sun will be, or I'm sorry, the earth will be positioned somewhere right here. The sun will be in the middle, and again, Gemini will be in the background. So this circle represents the earth moving at different times of the year. And so we can see the sun appearing to be traveling throughout the year through the zodiac circle. All right. So um, you could you can go through and freeze and then look at where the earth could possibly be positioned. Cancer, the earth will be positioned somewhere around here. The earth will be rising and cancer will be in the background. Leo, same thing, the earth will be somewhere around here. The earth will be in the middle. Leo, the constellation Leo will be in the background. So I hope that helps. Here's Virgo. Libra, Scorpius, which represents Scorpio, and Sagittarius, Capricornus, Capricorns, and Aquarius. So this is something that you probably should be vaguely familiar with when we talk about the, okay, well, the ascendant, and, you know, what the, what is the sun ascending in, okay? When, let's say in this example, when the Aquarius was born, this is what the sky looked like when the sun rose. And let me just back up and give us a better because I like it when I can see actually the sun rising. So let's say I have a friend that's a Gemini, and I think around June or July is their birthday or whatever. So this is what the, this is what the sky looked like the morning that they were born. Again. Earth was positioned here. Let's find Gemini. Okay, so yeah, there we go. So the Earth was positioned there. The Sun was in the middle, and Gemini was a star pattern or constellation in the background. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell, and what you should be vaguely familiar with before jumping into your natal chart. If you didn't understand this, just look, play it over again. Um, I hope this video made sense. And if you did, just uh, just hit the like button. Um, thanks for watching. Again, this is Astrology with Keno Thomas. Talk to you guys soon. And there's other videos coming after this concerning astrology because it's like some pre... I guess it's an appetizer what you need to know before you jump into your natal chart. To understand that astrology, it is a science. There's a science to it. And... Um, you know, we just didn't pull it out of our butts, uh, for lack of a better phrase. So thanks for watching.